What's up? I'm Mike, N2MAK, and today I got the Baofeng K63. It's a tri-band HT. Let's check it out. All right, first things first. This is an affiliated, sponsored content, <laughs> whatever it is. Here's how this went down. Radioity reached out to me, asked if I would like uh, this radio for free to uh, review and give my honest opinions and feedback, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, I played with this for a few weeks. Um, I've, I've used it to check into some nets, uh, do WinLink and APRS using the MobiLink TNC. That's not something that this can do natively. Um, and it's worked out fine. Uh, it it kind of meets the expectations I have of an HT, you know, as far as audio quality and, um, you know, being able to hit the repeaters that I need to hit. Um, but uh, let me go over a couple features of this radio and then uh, show you what you get in the box. And then we'll hook it up to some of the test equipment and see how it performs. Um, so right out of the gate, a um, couple neat things about this radio is first of all, it's a tri-bander. So it will, be, it'll, it will do two meters, 70 centimeters, plus 1.25 meters. And uh, that's exciting for me because I really enjoy VHF contesting. If, if you've watched any of the videos on my channel, you know that um, my whole mantra has typically been leave no band behind. You know, I use it or lose it in 220 or 1.25 meters is a perfect example because we lost a section of that band, a portion of the frequencies um, some time ago because it wasn't getting used uh, as much. And now we're kind of in this conundrum with 1.25 meters and some other bands where there is not a lot of equipment being made. Um, and when it comes to 1.25 meters, pretty much just seeing some of the Baofangs, um, some of the Chinese radios, TYT and others that, that are making HTs or mobiles um, that'll work in that space. And then for the major manufacturers, Alinko still does some mobiles and uh, Kenwood's got a new mobile coming out, but they, they have their tri-band D75. Uh, but there's not a lot of options. So I was really excited, first of all, that we have a new tri-band, a new radio that'll do 1.25 meters. What's also nice about this, this is the first HT I've ever used that does air band. And I don't live far at all from the airport. And in fact, when I've done some videos out here on the deck, <laughs> I had to pause because I have planes or helicopters flying over. Uh, so that's a really neat feature that this will do uh, air band. It's also hackable. Um, like uh, some of the other HTs, you can put some of the open source firmware on here. I have not done that yet, and that's not something I've done ever before. So let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see uh, what we can do uh, with respect to the firmware on this HT and what it might enable. Um, also, definitely worth pointing out is this is USB-C. So USB-C charge uh, right there on the battery. That's great to see. It's super convenient, uh, especially if you're traveling or whatever. You don't have to bring a charging cradle or whatever. You could charge it uh, from the wall. You can charge it from uh, a power bank. So it's it's nice to see radios getting some, uh, USB charging, um, especially USB-C. Uh, but let me show you what you get as we're talking about the charging cradle and whatnot. Let me show you what you get in the box, and then uh, let's hook it up and uh, test it out. All right, obviously I have already unboxed the radio, um, but let's take a look. I'll show you the packaging real quick. Still left the uh, screen protector on, so I don't know if that's gonna trigger anyone, but I'm leaving it on because this might be a giveaway someday. Uh, the packaging is, is pretty standard. You have an in the typical manual. Um, got your earpiece, lanyard, and then the charging cradle. So that's it. And it only comes with uh, a single dual band rubber deck antenna. So this will work on two meters and 70 centimeters, but it's, it's not going to work on 220. If you want to use it on 1.25 meters, you're going to need something else. And I'll, let me put this back together real quick and let's hook this up to uh, the meter and see what it says. 
Okay, we got the radio on. Let's put it on 146.52. There we are. I'm not sure how well that's going to display in the sun. But this is a new to me. Just picked this up from Gigaparts and Teletron uh, SWR watt meter. And I am keying up on high power and we're seeing 3.9, so just under uh, four watts on high power, 146.52. Let's try 446. Three point six watts, two twenty three dot five. The FM calling frequency for one point two five meters, and we're getting out three and a half watts there. Again, this is on high power. You can maybe you can, maybe you can't. You can see the H there. Um, let's see, maybe you get that. All right. Um, Let's try a couple others. Let's do 156. I think 156.8. I think that is channel 16 for Marine. So let's see what we get here. Look at that. We're getting out five watts down in the Marine band or up in the marine band, I guess, depending on your frame of reference. And then let's go up to the GMRS area. So let's just do like something like 463. Let's just see what happens here. And we're getting closer to three watts in the uh, GMRS space. So if you are wondering, yes, you can uh, transmit pretty uh, wide-banded uh, with this. Now let's see if it's clean. So we'll hook up the uh, the tiny SA. Oh actually you know what before we do that let me just give you a frame of reference too. Let me put a couple other HTs on the meter here and uh, so you just get a good frame of reference. This is the BTEC UV 5x3. So this is the tri-band version of the UV5R. Uh, from BTEC, and let's just see what this is putting out, 146.52, and we're getting out over 5 watts there, and I'm going to jump up to 223.5, ooh, we're getting out over 5 watts on 223.5, five and a half, wow, that's impressive, um, and let's see here, 446. Now we're down to just under four watts. Again, these are all on high power. And I can't remember if how wide banded this is or not. So let's see if this will go out. Yep. And so down in the marine frequencies, we're looking at just under four watts. Let's go up to. GMRS area, and then this is on 463 and two and a half watts. So there you go. There's a there's a frame of reference tri band to tri band, um, in and out of the band uh, for the power outputs. And we have a tiny SA. This is one of the smaller, less capable ones um but this will still allow me to test the harmonics on 146.52 on the two meter band so um that's what we're going to focus on and i've already got this configured for the 40 db attenuator that i have i am going to go in and i know that you're probably not going to be able to see what i'm doing here because these screens can be challenging in the sun like I am right now, even with some shade. So that's all set. Let's hook them up. So we'll start off with the K63 tri-band. There we go. 
Let's turn it on. And what I'm gonna do here, I'll take a look at this. I'll pause the sweep, bring it in front of the camera so you can actually see. So let's get this going, 146.52. It is transmitting, seeing some peaks, it's readjusting. And let's pause it there. Okay. And let's show you what we got going on here. All right, there we go. Hopefully that's focused a little bit better. And you can see this is a fail. You can see that the second harmonic is above the blue line above the 16 dB line. And you can also see that the second harmonic, and now this is up in the top right hand corner, you see that it's minus uh, 146.4 dB down. It needs to be a negative 40 dB down uh, to pass. So uh, this is a fail uh, for spurious emissions on two meters. Now let's check out the others and see what uh, what they show. So again, this is the BTEC UV 5x3 tri-band. It's going, it's going, it's going. Pause it right there. This is another fail. And let me show you what we got going on here. There we go, you're gonna get a little glare and reflection, but you can see that the second harmonic's above the blue line, so we're above the negative 16 dB line. And you can also see in the upper right-hand corner again that the second harmonic is only minus 16 dB down from the fundamental and it needs to be negative 40. So this is another fail. I'm not surprised by this. I had this radio tested at Hamvention by the ARRL a couple years ago and this came up on negative it failed on two meters and they also tested it on 1.25 meters and it failed there as well so uh, that's unfortunate but they don't all have to be failures and just to give you an example to kind of show that uh, and this is more for me <laughs> just to make sure I am doing this correctly we're gonna quickly hook up this is the GT5R this is the clean bofang um, and let's hook this up and put this on 146.52 and let that reset now let's go there we go we're on high power here and this is already looking a lot different I'm gonna wait for everything to level out and uh Pause the sweep. All right, we got a pass. So let me show you what a clean one looks like. Okay. Again, sorry about the glare and <laughs> everything else, but um, you can see that second harmonic is below. Yes, below, not above, below the blue line. So it's um, below that negative 1602 uh, line and up in the top right hand corner, you can see that it's negative 59.5 dB down. So well, well exceeding the negative 40 dB down it needs to be. Uh, so this is a pass folks. This is what a clean one looks like. All right. Um, I'm disappointed. I'm not surprised, but uh, this definitely came up with respect to the harmonics as a fail. Not surprised because I've seen it with the BTEC and, uh, and, and I've seen it with others. Um, it, it, I, I would really love to see a clean, uh, well-performing tri-band HT that's also affordable. Um, the D75 is as much as I would like to have it. <laughs> it's definitely uh, out of my price point. But... Um, Again, I'm uh, it, disappointing, but I'm not surprised because it, it's been the case with others. In fact, even with the, not to pick too much on BTEC, but recently when there was uh, Amazon uh, sale, I picked up another BTEC tri-band, the UV 5x3. It was on sale for a decent price. I'd seen some comments that there were some clean ones out there. I gave it a shot. 
right out of the box, came up dirty. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. I really wish that we could see more clean tri-bands, but um, I'm not done toying with this yet. Uh, I can still use it legally on UHF frequencies, and it happens to be that the weekly nut that I check into is on uh, 70 centimeters. So still used it for that. Still using it to uh, listen to air band, which is something that's pretty cool. And I'll give it a shot. Uh, you know, if, if, if enough of you are interested in seeing uh, what's involved with the firmware and uh, what can be done um, with some of the, uh, the open source stuff for this. Again, that's very new to me. I'm going to have to spend some time learning, seeing what can be done. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure really what else uh, there is to say about it. I'll toy with it a little bit more and, and kind of see uh, if there's anything else to add. But it's it's disappointing. It came up on the uh, failing end when it comes to the harmonics and the spurious emissions. The power output, I'm not too worried uh, about that if it's coming in close to 4 watts you know, versus, versus 5. But, um, but there you go. I will leave links to this and to the other radios in the description down below if you're interested. There'll be affiliate links. Um, so yeah, I'll get, get a commission, uh, spurious commissions. <laughs> hi, hi. Um, you know, on anything you pick up that helps support the channel or whatever. Um, uh, but if you're not interested in buying this or, or anything else, uh, but you made it this far, please click like, subscribe to my channel. If you got a comment or question, if you'd like to see more on this or on any of the other HTs, uh, let me know down below. I'm Mike, N2MAK73.